You are welcome to this landmark technology video. And we are going to be looking at HERM chart. So far, we have gone through Kubernetes concept and we have seen how we do deployment. So we realize for us to do a deployment, we need YAML or manifest files. So for us to do a single deployment, at times you may need multiple manifest files depending on the Kubernetes objects you are trying to deploy. We've looked at that so far. So at this point, we'll look at HUM. What is HEM? HEM is a package manager for Kubernetes applications. Now, in Linux distribution, we have what we call YUM, like for Red Hat, and app for Ubuntu. Similarly, we have HEM. So HEM is a package manager for Kubernetes. It allows you to install applications on your Kubernetes cluster you know, both applications and to do some deployments. We can use HEM to achieve that. What will HEM do? HEM is going to let you fetch, deploy, and manage the life cycle of applications. Okay, both third-party products and your applications. For example, we may decide to install a third-party ap 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 application to monitor our servers. That, that, that would be a third-party application. Like maybe we are trying to deploy something like, you know, Grafana. We are trying to install Prometheus. You know, those are all monitoring tools, okay? Those are third-party tools. We use Helm to achieve that. So Helm introduces similar concept such as chart which are Helm packages. So we are going to have Helm chart. You know, Helm is like, you know, chart are Helm packages. Like in a Linux distribution, we have RPM packages. RPM is Red Hat Package Manager. You see that we have such packages. Similarly, we have Helm chart. So Helm uses repositories and Helm repositories host this chart. So we can call, you know, it's just like now I'm referring us to this, to a group of, you know, charts here. Now we are going to realize, for example, if I want to install, if, if I want to do a deployment using this, you know, if, if I want to use a Kubernetes file here to deploy, let's say we are trying to do a deployment. Let me just do something real quick, okay? Before going back to ham, let me do kubectl get all. kubectl get all. What did I do? Get, get all. Now, this is what we just, we had deployed this Spring Boot application. Now, for us to deploy this Spring Boot application, we had to create a YAML file called springapp.yaml. You see that, but with harm, these files are going to be automatically created for us. You see that the process of creating this file will be automated. And that's what we are going to be, we are going to look at shortly. So with harm as well, the harm CLI, it can install, install its initial deployment. It can upgrade or it can remove packages. You see that so if we did some deployment using HAM, you know, for us to deploy using HAM, we're going to do YUM install. No, HAM install. You see that? The name of whatever we want to install. We'll see that shortly. So why use HAM? Why should we use HAM? Kubernetes can be difficult to manage with all the objects you need to maintain from config maps, secrets, ports, services, deployments, name them. Helm will help you manage all of these. You see that? That's why we are going to see what to do and how we can use Helm. Helm greatly simplifies the process of creating, managing, and deploying applications using Helm chart. In addition, Helm also maintains a versioning history. Very important. I'm going to underline this aspect. Helm maintains a versioning history. You see that? 
we are going to see, we are going to look at how Hem can maintain versioning history because, you know, versioning is very important. So how can Helm maintain versioning history of our application? And once it does that, if something goes wrong, you can simply call Helm rollback. So we can easily roll back with Helm. For example, if we're doing, let's say we did a deployment, like in real time, right? You, we, we work in a company and pro probably we have to do deployment, let's say at the, you know, like weekly, for example. Now each deployment is going to carry a version. So with Helm, is going to be able to, you know, manage that versioning. The same thing we saw when we did Git. You see that, you know, whenever there is a commit, what happened? There's a commit ID. You see that, so please take note. It's very important we have that understanding. So deploying application to Kubernetes, the powerful and popular container operation tool can be complex. So we can set up a single application, okay, to involve, all what we want to deploy, such as port services, deployment, replica set, you know, everything is going to be, you know, put together in a template HEM chart, which we are going to see shortly. What is a HEM chart? In HEM, a chart is basically just a collection of manifest files organized in a specific directory structure that describe a related Kubernetes resource. You see that? So that is what a HEM chart is all about. So HEM uses chart to pack all the required Kubernetes components for an application to deploy, run, and scale. So I've already explained to us how that the HEM chart is similar to like RPM packages, Debian packages, okay, making it easy for developers to distribute and consume installed application via different repositories. Now, the, 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 the fact is you may not really have this particular aspect in interview that is you being asked, you know, what is Helm chart? Okay, but it's good to know it. Like it's very good to know it. You know, Mega Mama was giving a tax lately and the question was how can we be able, you know, to create repositories that can help us in our versioning for our deployments. As you know, and I just refer her back, let's go through HEM chart. HEM chart did not come in your interview, but this is what they want you to explain to them because now you're at work, right? So that's why one thing I told us, we are trying to achieve two things, get the job and keep the job. HEM packages are called chart explained already. It's going to come in this directory structure. For example, if I do hem create, here's the basic directory structure. It's going to create, if, if we do hem create Java web app, it will create this Java web app with all these, you know, YAML files. Please note that YAML files are either spare, okay, MA, ML, or YML, the same thing. So please take note. I know we have been using YML, but the same structure of this nature. You see that? So now what are the important files that we have here? Once you do hem create, assuming I'm trying to deploy a Spring Boot application, I'm going to execute a command, hem create Spring Boot. Like here is Java app. I want to install a Java app. Immediately I create this Java app. It's going to give me this template. What do I use this template to do? I just go to the template for service and I just, you know, change the service information, whatever I want to change. I just go to the template and change it. It's that easy. You see that probably I'm going to use an ingress controller for my deployment. Okay, if I want to use ingress, I enable it. If I don't want to use it, if I want to use a service account, okay, I'm going to enable it as well. One very important file in HEM is values file. So all these files, I will not touch these files. The only file I'm going to go there is going to be the values. Where have I defined my values, my image name? Do I want, you know, what is it that I'm trying to deploy? Do I want to do HPA, horizontal port auto scaling? I'm going to define all of that in these values.yame files. So please take note. Manually managed chart dependency can be placed in this directory. 
So take those up as well. So if you want to have some, you know, manually manage files, we can put them in the chat directory. So template, we have seen the template here. Template directory will contain all these files. You see that whatever, you know, so once you do a, a create, it's going to create all those resources for you. So take note about that. So HEM concept, repository concept. Now, one more thing is the HEM command can install a chart from a local repository or from a tar file, from a package version of, so, which implies, you know, with HEM install, it can untar this file and install whatever it needs to be installed. This package chart can also be automatically downloaded and installed from chat repositories or repos. We are going to see that shortly. How can I achieve that? But what we are saying here is, you know, we can create a HEM chat repository, okay, and be able to use those repositories to be able to achieve our goal. So we are going to see how the HEM repository works. You know, but normally, once you create a HEM repository, you can use that home repository, okay, as a version of your application and be able to do what either, you know, create the application, you know, and, and you know, uh, uh, deploy that uh, uh, application accordingly. Now, for example, these are some of the key commands in Helm. We are going to come back here. If I'm trying to, you know, uh, 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 install this Nginx, okay, if I'm trying to install Nginx Ingress controller, I can, first of all, do hem repo art. I'm going to add this repository, the same way you do a git clone. What are you trying to do? You are trying to download, when you do hem repo art, it's going to add the repository. Then you can equally update the repository. You see that now, if I want to install this now in my environment, this is the command, hem install, okay, Nginx, the name of what, this name can, whatever name which I want to give, take note about that, hem install. Now, this command depends on the version of hem. There are two versions of hem. If it is version two, this is going to be applicable for version three. Version two will be hem install dash dash name. You see that? I'm going to do dash dash name, okay? And I'm going to give the name of whatever I'm trying to install. This is just two dash, dash dash name. This is for, HEM2. Now, HEM has a release concept, which therefore implies that whenever you do an installation, that installation is going to create a kind of a version number, and that is going to be like release one, first release. So you can proceed. So whenever you install, assuming you are trying to do upgrade and you are doing installation weekly, so for each installation, it's going to create a release. And that release, you can safely deploy that release. No, you can safely push that release in, you know, a hosted repository. That could be GitHub. That could be JFox. That could, could, could be, okay, Nexus. You see that? So please take note. So that is what the release is going to like. You are told that think of a release as a mechanism to track installed application on a Kubernetes cluster. When an application is installed by HEM, a release is being created. Releases can be tracked with HEM LS. You see that each have a revision. So we are going to have a, a revision number, which is the HEM release versioning terminology. So please take note now. Before we come to this command, let's look at the HEM architecture. How is the HEM architecture like? Now, we have developers, they have written their code, everything, packaged the code, come out with their YAML files, everything, right? So with the HEM3 architecture, it is similar to what, you know, uh, it's similar to uh, what we did for network file system, NFS. You remember with with NFS, what did we do? We created an NFS saver. You see that? We created this NFS saver. And with this NFS saver, we were able to install, we, you know, now inside the Kubernetes cluster, what did we install? We installed the NFS client. You see that? Because how will HEM communicate with our Kubernetes cluster? You see that? So now, let me first of all come back to the old version of HEM version two. 
So with version two, okay, we had something called Tila. You see that? We had something called Tila. Now this Tila was the, is the client service for him, which means for him to talk to our API server, okay, we need to install Tila service. So it's just like with the network file system, okay, with network file system, NFS, let me just illustrate something, network file system. Okay, when we installed an NFS server, what did we do? We had to install, okay, you know, we had to install the client server inside our worker node in this Kubernetes cluster. That's what we did. So we install network file system in the network file system in the, okay, in the, LFS server, then we install the client software in our nodes located in the Kubernetes cluster. Now, similarly, we have a service called Tila. You see that? So when we execute the HEM command line, okay, we can use the HEM command line to make API call, that is to communicate with this, with this our Kubernetes cluster. So we have an M client or an M workstation trying to communicate. So Helm connect to Tila to deploy Helm chart. So when it get, when Helm gets to this cluster, it will talk to this cluster using Tila. So inside the Helm cluster, we have installed a service. So inside the Kubernetes cluster, we have installed a service called Tila. This is what used to happen before, but now the when Hem is trying to do an installation, Hem can take those Kubernetes files, those YAML files from this Hem hosted repository. You see that from a Hem to now I'm trying to install Prometheus. Okay, where is the Prometheus YAML files found? It's found in this repository. So when I when 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 I do Hem install, it's going to download this YAML file. Okay, and then it will do the deployment inside my Kubernetes cluster. So for it to communicate with this, my cluster, it need this Tila service. Now we have a developer, okay, trying to execute this command. It could be a developer, it could be a DevOps engineer or a Kubernetes admin trying to do some deployments. So please take notes. Now, this is the old version. Okay, in Helm 2, there is a Helm component called Tila, which will deploy, which will be deployed in the Kubernetes cube system namespace. Okay, Tila component is removed in Helm 3. So this, here we have Helm 3. This is Helm 3. In Helm 3, we don't need Tila. So our communication is direct. All we need is this Helm server. How would this Helm server communicate or this home client communicate with our Kubernetes cluster is going to need three things. The home client will need the HEM CLI. It will need the HEM CLI. What else do we need to communicate with our Kubernetes cluster by default? What do you need? We need the cube config file. You see that? You need that cube config file to communicate with the API server. So please take note. So this is what you know. Helm three is going to be you is going to we are going to you know. So with Helm three, we are not installing any software in the Kubernetes cluster. We are not doing that. All we are doing is we just need to install Helm, and Helm is going to achieve the rest. You see that we just install Helm. Once we install Helm. The communication we can now use, you know, Helm. We Helm can connect to our API server using the kube config file, okay, and the Helm CLI. So take note about that. Now, how do we install Helm three? Note, I think I put this in the note as well. The workstation you are running should have kube CTL set, okay, to the cluster you want to manage with Helm. Now, Helm works with Kubernetes and uses, okay, the default what? Kube config file. 
So please take note. It, this is what, as, you know, for you to communicate with any Kubernetes cluster, you, they, 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 you know, you need to make some API calls, you know, and which file are you trying to, to which file is going to validate the call is the cube config file. So that's it, just install, you know, our home in this Kubernetes cluster that we just created. So we are going to do installation of harm now. Let's do harm installation and see what harm is going to enable us to achieve. So now I'll copy all of this line of code. I'm trying to install home, come here. So I first of all downloaded that uh, home repository. I'll just show mode and execute the script. Very simple, just three lines of command. Now I execute this script. Three lines of command. I've installed home. Okay, preparing to install Helm. Helm install. <laughs> you see that? It's that simple. So there is nothing, you know. So now, if I do Helm, it tells me all the different options I can run with the Helm command. So I can be able to add a Helm repository. Okay, so I can do Helm repo add. Now, let me run this command, hem repo ls. Now, no repositories to show. So I'm trying to check the, you know, you know when we used to do git, right? We do git add, okay, and we added a remote repository. You see that? You know, that we did re, git remote ls. It's going to list the repositories that, we you know, we are working on or where we are pushing our codes to. Similarly, that's what Tom, is going to enable us to achieve. You see that, that's what Helm will enable us to achieve, let me see. Uh, so now, let me just show you guys something. Let's go to the Helm repository online. Let's go to the Helm repository online. Do, do I have, okay, so I have Helm here. This is Helm repository. Oh, how did I get here? Just go to Google, go to Google and Google Helm. You can just take Helm chart. Okay, click on Helm chart here. Which kind of charts do you want? Which kind of Helm charts do you want, for example? Let me say I'm looking for a Helm chart for, I'm trying to install a third party application. Uh, let me do Grafana. Okay, Grafana. This is, so I'm having this Helm chart for Grafana. I can decide to download this home chart. This is how it's going to look like, you know, when you want to display, you know, that is, Grafana is a dashboard, you know, once uh, Prometheus does monitoring, Grafana is going to display, you know, whatever is being monitored in this beautiful dashboard. So take note about that. So this is Grafana. So I can be able to download this chart, you know, depending on my project requirement. You see that like, it's telling me installing the chart Hem repo art. Do you see that? So it, it tells you everything. So the good thing is for you to just know this too. When you go online, the official documentation will give you everything that you need. So now we have seen that. So what we are going to do is, let me just minimize this page. Now we are going to add this Nginx ingress controller repository. You see that I want us to add this Nginx ingress controller repository. You know, let me just take us to this repository. Let's see where it's, where it's found as well. Nginx, oh, it did not give me, let me see, HTTPS, Nginx ingress. So this is the Nginx ingress controller. Okay, all the commands that you need to install it. If you just go online for the hem chart, you are going to get it there. You see that? So please take note. So now let me go back to our working document. So I'm going to add this repository. I want to call the name Nginx table. You see that? So I'll add this repository. 
I can update the repository if I want to. I, I run hem repo ls, we found nothing before. So if I do that, so if I'm told that nginx table has been added to your repository. So if I do hem repo ls, you see that this is the repository that, that I have now. I can run an update on all my repositories. Hem repo update. You see that repo update? Okay, so it has, normally when you do a HEM repo update, what, what, will, what will happen is, it is going to go to this repository, for example, and check if there are any changes, right? It's going to download and update it. You see that, so now I'm told that, you know, you see that successfully got an update from Nginx chat repository. So it has updated this repository. Now, if I want to install, Okay, this repository like to deploy Nginx. You see that? Assuming I'm trying to deploy Nginx, now I'm going to run this command. You see that? Now, normally, the command to deploy objects, the command to deploy objects, this is the command, hem install. Now we are using hem3. The command is hem install. What is the name? Okay, name of whatever you want to install. You see that? Let me say uh, app name or app or deployment name because here we are actually doing deployment. Deployment name. What are we trying to deploy? You see that? Deployment name. Okay, now once you do that, the next thing is the chat name. The chat name. So this is the default command. Hem install deployment name. What are you trying to deploy? Chat name. You see that? So if I execute this command, I'm saying hem install. I want to install Nginx ingress. This is the chat name, which implies if I go to the hem repository, this is the name that is there. You see that? That is a chat name. So let's do an installation. Now, if I don't indicate any namespace, it's going to install this in the default namespace. So I won't indicate any namespace for now. Let's see what we are going to get. Nginx install. Okay, so I'm not choosing any namespace. So it's going to use a default namespace, enter. It's going to do an installation. Now look at something. It has done an installation. What does it achieve? We are told that namespace is default. The name of, okay, the name of our deployment is Nginx Ingress. It was last deployed October 8th. Did you see that? That's what I'm told. Whatever namespace is of this time here is the wrong time. Now the namespace is default. Status deployed, it has been deployed. The revision is one. You see that? The revision is one. So if I go on hem ls, now, what am I told here? I'm told that I have done this deployment, okay? And the revision is one. So it has created a release. You see that? I could create a GitHub repository and do a deployment that, you know, and push whatever I have deployed so that I can be able to get the exact copy, okay, of this information safe in my GitHub repository. So please take note. This is one thing that I wanted us to have an understanding on. Now we can decide to add more repositories here. How do we add the repositories? You see this command, help repository add. You see that? You know, whatever repository we want to add, like if I, you know, do, do this, it is going to add more repository. Like this one is going to add. Okay, you see that? Helm. Kubernetes chart is going to go to, to, to the chart and add whatever repository, but let me just run this command. This command will search repository that are available in the hem remote repo. So hem search repo stable. Okay, so now this is the repository that we have already installed. It is in its stable version. You see that? So, but let me just run this other command. See how we can, you know, 
sort out from more repositories that could be available. You see that. So stable has been added to your repository. So this is the repository that I have added. That this is the repository name. You see that? So please take note, it's very important. We have this understanding now. There's one more thing that I want us to look at. You know, we are going to create a repository. We'll create a repository, let me go back up. We are going to do, we'll execute this command and create a home repository, okay? We are going to create a repository called, you know, we can create a repository called Java Web App or let's create a repository with this command. So we have a command that we are going to use, uh, hem create, let me see if I have it here in the note. Home create. It's supposed to be here in the notes. If it's not here, I'll just... I want to create a custom repository. We have used, okay, this is the repository. Now we are going to execute this command, hem create repository name. You see that? So watch what we are going to achieve now. Now, if I do an LS now, okay, look at what we got. We have this Spring app. You see that? That is the Spring app that we have, which was deployed, okay? I can decide to delete that particular. So let me do kubectl, get all. Now, look at something. I even forgot to do this illustration, kubectl, get all. Now, look at the resources that we have here. What do we have? We have this ingress controller. This ingress controller, how did we create this ingress controller? When did we create it? You remember when we executed the command? Hem install, right? It created this ingress controller. Hem install ingress controller. Okay, you see that? It created this with service of type load balancer. So please take note about that. So it created this ingress controller. It created this deployment, this ingress controller deployment as well. That's what it created. But now we are the ones that created this, okay, deployment for our Spring Boot app. You see that we created this deployment. So I want to delete this deployment that we created before. So I'll just go on kubectl delete. Delete, let's delete this deployment. Okay, delete it. So now if I do kubectl get all, that deployment is not there anymore. So we can't access that particular application online. So now look at something. I want us to create this. Okay, so we are going to come here. We are going to do hem create, hem, create, I want to call it Spring App because that's what we have been, you know, we have used so far, Spring App. You see that? Enter. Creating Spring App. Did you see that? Spring App has been created. Okay, so now we have created Spring App. When I do an LS, do, do you see this Spring App directory here? Do you see the directory for Spring App? Now, when you do hem create, it creates all the charts for you. So let's do ls spring app. Okay, let's ls spring app. Okay, now look at what we get here. Do you see the spring app ls? Who created all this template? Now, let me just do a tree command. Let me clear the screen and do tree spring app. Tree not found. Uh, app dash y install tree. I need to use sudo because I'm logging in as Ubuntu user. Okay. Installed. Now, tree command. Look at what we have here. What do we get here? We, we executed a command called Hem, create, we, are, we want to create this deployment. Look at what this deployment created for us. 
This is this is a directory structure. It has chat.yaml. Okay, very important. It has values.yaml. You see that? Now it has a it has template. You see this? So this is a template that in this template, okay, if we want to install HPA, it's going to use this template. If we want to install an ingress controller, it will use this template. If we want to install whatever service, it will use this template. If we want to install a service account, it will use this template. So now, this value file, is that's where we are going to define whatever we are trying to install in this value file. You see that? We we'll define in the value file. So let me go into the value file. Let's see, you know. So we are going to do, let's, Let's do VI. Let me come. Okay, so that's VI. Okay, Spring app slash what? Slash value file. Please take note, this is values.ya. So values.yaml file. Enter. Now, this is a value file. In this value file, it has given some default values, default values for Spring app. I can change them depending on my specification. I don't need to, you know, be trying to create any, okay, YAML files. All the files have been created for me. So all I need to know is to be able to interpret a YAML file. You see that? So now it tells me for the image, what is the repository? It has given me Nginx. Is that what I want? That's not what, what I want. Probably I want to change this. Okay, what do I want? You know, I can use something like, you know, so I'm going to change the image. I'm going to use my landmark, my landmark tech slash, I can do spring boot app. Now, what version? Now, you see the version? So it's going to pull policy. It would going to pull the image if not present. So this value files is applicable. It's going to have an impact on all the other files. So I come here. Now version, okay, the version is the tag. Okay, I'm going to use the, that Spring Boot image. Okay, version one. You see that? So do we have any? pool secret, if there were pool secret, probably, you know, username, password or whatever, we are going to enter those ones there, but that is a public repository. So no pool secret. Now, look at something. It tells me, create a service account. Do I want a service account to access this image? If I want it, I take yes. If I don't, I change that true to false. You see that? I change true to false. I don't want a service account. But if I want the service account, I change it to yes. Did you see that? I'm going down. You know, this is, this is a value file. This value file now, which kind of service do I want to create? Do I want to access this application externally? Do I want a cluster IP service or I want a load balancer or a node port? Whatever I want, I'm going to choose it here. So I can take load balancer Please take note the way we write the load balancer. L is capitalized, B is capitalized. Now, what is the port? This, this is default port that will give me HTTP, which is port 80. But this application is running on Tomcat. So it need port what? 8080. You see that? So I change that port 80 to 8080. Now, do I want to you know, install an ingress controller? Do I want it? If I want to install ingress controller, what I'll do is, I'll change this false to true. You see that? I'll change this false to true. But I don't want to do ingress controller, so I'm going to leave it at false. You see that? So now you are going down. You are just changing the values, you know, in the value files. You are changing the value. Now it comes here. Do I want to, do I want an auto scaling group? If I need an auto scaling group, I'll take yes. Year is false, so I'll just put year true. You see that? How do I want it to scale? Okay, I can say, okay, minimum is one, 
maximum is four. That's an auto scaling group now. Now somebody had asked a very important question. I think that was Frida at one time. If we decided to use demon set and, and maybe do deployment on specific node, how can we achieve that? We had achieved that in Docker using selector. Now we use constraints and levels. So here as well, we can do a node selection here. You see that maybe I've you know, classified some nodes as database nodes, I can do the net node selection. So this is what we need to understand. Now look at something, resources. Do I want to define any resources like CPU utilization? I'll do it here. Limit, right? Maybe you want your node to consume a certain amount of resources. On that limit, I'll define it here. You see that? That's what I'll do. I'll define it here. You see that? Okay, I'll define it here. If you want your port to have specific resources, I'll define it here. So everything has been stated for you in the value file. So this is what the value file does. Value file is a very powerful file. You know, value file. Yeah, Prof, a quick question there. Yes. Uh, on the auto scaling. Let's let's assume that uh, you remember the, the case of uh, the immigration website that we once spoke about when the Trump election took place. So uh, assuming that let's say they set the maximum replicas to 200, that means if the, the demand goes higher. Yes. Yeah, how does that, uh, yeah, how is that handled? Oh. Uh... Anyway, that, 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 that is going to be handled using other parameters. Okay. In, 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 a, in a situation like this, right? Because yes. in, in real time, you can be able to forecast what will happen. You see that? Okay. So in, in real time, you will know what is going to happen. If you are going to have a, a, a kind of load, then you know how to define how you want your application to scale. Okay. So take, yeah. So uh, maybe in, in a situation where crash, uh, to solve the crash, uh, the, the problem would certainly be to, to revisit this file, right? Yes, you just um, come, yeah. come to the value files and but take okay. note that we can do scaling at both the cluster level yeah. and the port level. So, yeah. okay, now look at something, please. So yeah, we are accepting that there should be an auto scaling group. Did you see this? Minimum is one, maximum is four now. Let me see what else did we accept? Ingress, we said false. If I took put yes here, it's going to change. Okay, so now let me save and quit. I think we have explained everything here. Let me save and quit. Okay, what did I do? Default. Okay, this is Helm chart. Now look at this directory structure here again. Now, whatever we have, we are, we are going to do a deployment of our Spring app, this Spring app, so there is a deployment of YAML file. Now, in inside, we have an HPA. Since we have accepted that, we want to do horizontal port auto scaling, it's going to create this resource. Now we said it should not create this ingress, right? We don't want ingress, it won't create ingress. We want a service of type load balancer, it's going to create it. Now, let me just show you something. One thing that is inside these files that, okay, now look at something. Let's cut one of these files. I want to cut spring up slash templates. Let me go to the templates slash which of the files. Let's just do HPA horizontal port autoscaler dot yame. Let's see what is inside this file. Now, inside this file, okay, what do we get here? Let me see. This is the file here. Do you see this file? This file is written in Go language. It's written in Go language. So now all this, it is written in a script format. It is saying that if values for auto scaling is enabled, then create auto scaling. You see that? So that, that is what it is saying. So if it is not enabled, it will not create auto scaling. Okay. So we have the spring app full name. So all this stuff has been created. So all what we have here, okay, just, it is just, it's, it's simply telling you 
Resources will be created depend on what you have defined in this value.yamfi. So this value.yamfi is very important because this is where we define whatever resource we want created. So all these other parameters, it will auto fill. You see that it will auto complete itself. So please take note. If I go to deployment.yame, you see the same thing. Let's just go to deployment.yame, deployment, deployment, dot yame. You see that it's trying to do a deployment. This is the deployment of Yame file, API version. For this deployment, you know, there is no if there. there it's going to take the metadata name based on what we have defined. Whatever we have defined as name, okay, in the value file is going to get it from here. The replica is an under spec, it's, it's function of what we have defined. Selector, whatever we have defined, you see that, that's what is going to happen. So, but these are the files written in Go language. You see that? Written in Go language. So now our container port is supposed to be port 8080. You see that? So I'm going to I'm going to change this port from port 80 here to 8080. So let me VI and change this port. That's all I'm going to change and we'll do our deployment. That's the only information I'm changing here. I come here, the port number, okay. The container port, this is a Spring Boot app. So it's going to be port 8080, done. Okay, so now I can be able to execute one line command and it's going to deploy, okay, my Spring app in this Kubernetes cluster. But before doing that, let me run Java template. Let's see. Java template spring app. Okay. Then Java install is going to now do the installation for us. So let's do, oh, sorry, hem template spring app. You see that? Now, this template spring app tells you in what is the, the resources that are going to be created. You see that? What is going to be created for you? It tells you whatever you have defined in your value file. Okay, we are going to we are doing a, we are going to deploy a service. The service is type what load balancer. It's going to be exposed on port 8080. You see that? That is a service. Okay, it's going to what else do we have? We have this deployment. You see that? We have this deployment. It's going to deploy. Everything selector, okay, spring app. You see that? So, whatever we have defined, when we execute this command, now we have HPA, service of kind horizontal port auto scaler. We have defined that. You see that? So, it is going to minimum replicas is one, maximum is four. Okay, so please take note. Target utilization is 80% by default will be 80% because we did not define when this stuff should scale out. So by default, it has taken this much percentage. So now we can be able to do our deployment. How do we deploy? We are going to do hem install. Now, how do I want to call this application? Okay, I can, I'm going to call it Spring App. Okay, or Spring, well, I can just call it web app. Let me see, is this my, or let me call it Spring Boot. Spring Boot, you see that? That is the application, Spring Boot. Now, what is the chat name? You see that, what is my chat name? So install the, the name of, the name I want to give and the chat name. So in this case, my chat name is what? Spring app. So please take note. So I want to install, you know, I'm trying to deploy this Spring Boot application. You see that? So let me come. So now if I execute this command, it's going to create all the resources. It has created the resources. 
of service what type load balancers. Mm -hmm. It has a revision. The revision here is one. So if I do hem ls, what do I get? I have this Spring Boot application that has been deployed with first revision. So if I do another revision, okay, whatever application that you deploy is going to carry, you know, multiple revisions. So depending on how many deployment you have done. So this is a release. This is actually a release. You see that? So please take note. Very important. Very important. So now let's do kubectl get all. This is our Spring Boot app. It has created this load balancer. I can access this service using this what load balancer. Okay, so, but we saw a command called NS lookup. NS lookup load balancer. That's it. Okay, uh, it's save. I can't find this. It is still creating the resource. That's why it's still creating the resource. It hasn't been created yet because it's going to actually take a while to create because it's creating that resources in AWS kubectl. Let me do get SVC service, get SVC. So I'm told that Seba can't find this yet. So it's still creating this resource. It's still creating the resource. But if I copy this, if I come here, let's try to access that. That is still creating the resource. That's why we get that error. However, this is one thing that I wanted us to have an understanding on. So we have created a release. There are going to be some description where, you know, you see what they call release management. Okay, this is what we have achieved. We have just created a release using Herm chart, deploying our application. You see that? So let me just do kubectl. Let's get, get the port. Get port dash o white. Let's be sure is our port running? Oh, our port is not running. It tries to pull that image. It couldn't find the image. Are you seeing this? This port is not running. Maybe that's why the service cannot be able to access. So let's do kubectl describe. kubectl describe port. This is the port number and know the problem. Now, we are told that this version one image might learn math tech slash Spring Boot app. This version one image, am I sure I have any such version of that image in my Docker Hub repository? Let me just check. Let me check Docker. Let me check Docker. I, I want to see repositories. Okay, I have the Spring Boot Mongo. Did you see what I have here? I don't have Spring Boot app. And look at the tags that I have. You see that I have a Spring Boot Mongo. I don't have Spring Boot, you know, so I have I have tag year latest, I have tag year V2. These are the tags that I have. I have V2, V3, and latest. And it's called Spring Boot Mongo. You see that? So it's trying to pull an image that doesn't exist. So there's an error message. You see that? There's an error message. So let me go back. Uh, let's VI. Okay. We are where we VI into okay. We have we have to VI into the value files. So it's Spring Boot Mongo. Come here. Spring Boot Mongo. Spring Boot Mongo. So we are going to use the version V2. We have V2 image. So now we can do an update. We can do an update. Okay, so 
we can hem, we can do an upgrade. Okay, let's do an upgrade. Hem, upgrade. Let me see if that's going to work because we are having an, you know, we used the wrong image before. We may have to do it. So I want to update this installation, this deployment. So I do upgrade, hem, upgrade. Okay, so it has a second revision. You see that? It has the second revision. It has been upgraded. So now let's do kubectl get ports. Let me see if the, the port is not still running. So I'm going to do hem install. Let me just call this one spring because what I have here, I want to change the name hem install. Okay, so it has created, okay, this particular re revision, the new name, we call it Spring. So let me check the kubectl get port. Is the port running now? Uh, spring. He has a problem trying to pull that image. Let me see something. It's trying to pull the image. Did I get the stuff correctly? Let me go back there. Value file. My landmark tech. Spring Boot Mongo version two. I should pull the image. Okay, let me see something. Uh, let, me, let me change this stuff to Marvin Web App. Let me use uh, version two or version one. Okay. Let me pull the version one image. So I want to do my landmark tech. I hope you have that's correct. My landmark tech version one. I think every other thing is fine. Now, okay, let me disable this auto scaling group or just disable it. Let me take force here. Okay. I'm doing force for auto scaling group. Number of replicas here is one. I can change it to two if I want. Two. But I think one is okay. Let me just leave one. Now let me come back. I will I'll call this install. I'll call it a Marvin app. So I want to install using the Marvin app image. Okay, so let me see. kubectl get port. Okay, it's trying to create the port for Marvin app. Okay, I'm told that the port is running, but I'm not seeing it available. Did you see this? Did you see the port? The port shows running. Let me, see. Let me describe this Marvin app port. Let's see what you get there. kubectl get port. Okay, the port is running now. Do you see the Marvin app port running? Do you see that? So we, we have the right image. Okay, and the port is running. So now we can do kubectl get SVC. So these are the services that we have here and all the services are of type, okay, load balancer. So this is a service that we want to use to access our application. This service, so I can do NS lookup, NS lookup. 
you see that not ns lookup one word so but basically that's one this one thing i wanted us to you know have an understanding on uh is it trying to create that the uh, load balancer so but one thing i wanted us to have an understanding on you know is just the fact that like what we have used here we have been able to use hem chart okay to do our deployments and this is what hem chart is going to enable us to achieve now after doing this deployment what else can we do let me just show you a few things that can be done you know we can be able to archive this file you see that we can upgrade the deployment or we can archive the file that we can here yeah. Okay, we can archive the file. So the command takes a path to the chart and runs a series of tests to verify that the chart is well formed. This is the command that we uh, for template. That's what template we do. But if I run this command, it's going to archive this file. For example, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me clear the screen. LS. Now these are the files that we have here. We have this AWS you know, archive file that we have here. So if I do hem, okay, the command is lint, the name is spring app, enter. You see that? Look at something, ls. Wait a minute, what am I told here? Linting, oh, one chart one chart fail let me see it's supposed to be spring up okay now let me come let me do a package okay now ls look at something so we are i'm i'm, I'm trying to create you know we have done a deployment Okay, we have done a deployment, we have a release. So we want to package this release and push this release to a HEM repository so that tomorrow, if we want to deploy, what we are going to use to deploy is, you know, we will not need to always like download, you know, some YAML files. We can just call this particular HEM repository and do a release. You see that be it in GitHub or wherever the, 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 the stuff may be. Okay, now these are some lines of commands that we can achieve that, which I'll just explain, I'll not demonstrate it now. So what we are going to do is, we are going to go to GitHub and you know create a repository. We clone that repository. Okay, once we clone the repository, we are going to now run this, the move command Okay, you know, we are trying to move whatever we have archived here into the repository that we have created, hem repo. You see that? So once we do that, we can now do an indexing, hem repo index. What are we trying to do? The content of whatever is here, okay, in this hem repo is going to be, you know, transferred to this remote repository, which therefore implies, you know, with time, anybody around the world, anybody, or probably if we make, make it a public repository, they can be able to access this repository and do their deployments. Or if we want to deploy in future, we just need to, you know, call this repository and we'll be able to do a deployment in just minutes. So please take note, this is what uh, HAM is all about. We are going to use this HAM on our Friday class to install you know, a monitoring tool, which is, you know, where we are going to wrap up with our Kubernetes analysis. But before doing that, let me just show you guys one thing. Look at something. I want to do a deployment. Okay, let's say I come to this. Now I'm trying to do a deployment using this particular, okay, dynamic inventory. You see that I'm trying to do a deployment. Let me see if that's the example I wanted to use. So config map. The one thing I just want us to see, okay, let me just use this 
dynamic. Uh, okay, let me use this. Now look at something. Let me make sure, okay, it has everything that we need. It's going to create the service. It will create persistent volume. Okay, so now look at something. I just want you guys to see what is going to happen here. Now, I want to do a deployment. I want to use this GitHub repository to do a deployment. I'm not going to download this file. This file is called Spring Boot Mongo Dyn. Okay, so, so that you are going to appreciate more what HEM is going to enable us to achieve. So I can do kubectl apply dash F. You see that kubectl apply dash F. Now, this is the file. This file, where is this file located? is located in the company, okay, uh, you know, GitHub repository. If I do enter, uh, something is wrong with one of the lines of the file. Let me just do something, kubectl. Let me delete everything. I know it is delete all dash dash all. I want to delete everything that I have currently because I know I'm trying to deploy some application that are already running with the same name. So it won't allow me to achieve that. So I'm deleting every resource that is created in this server. I just want us to, to see how you can be able to use such repository for your deployment. And we're going to see that again on Friday, you know, kubectl. It's, it's trying to it's trying to delete all the resources. Let me see. kubectl get all. Let me see what I have again left. Get all. Okay, it's it was trying to delete these services of type load balancers. It's trying to delete the services. Delete. Okay, that's deleted Kubernetes service, Spring App service, Spring Boot service. It's deleting all those. Okay, that's fine. Let me just, now, let me rerun this command again. Let's see if the resources that I want to create. Now, kubectl apply. This file is in our GitHub or in one hem repository. Enter. Uh, it, it has not de deleted everything. You need to delete everything for that command to be applicable. But now, this is one thing that I just wanted us to understand with HEM chart. So basically in interviews, you need to be able to know what is, a, what is HEM chart. You need to understand the architecture of HEM chart, how HEM chart you know, is structured. The fact that you know, HEM is going to communicate with the Kubernetes cluster using what? Using the kube config file, using kube CTL. That's what is going to communicate and you know, if it is HEM2, for it to communicate with the cluster, it's going to do the same thing that we did with NFS. We need to install an agent, a HEM agent called TILA. You see that? So please take note. This is just one thing I wanted us to have an understanding on. Uh, Kubernetes is a very interesting, you know, uh, and it is the, the, the one of the most important, you know, models that we need to understand as far as DevOps is concerned. That was one of the most important models. Well, something is wrong with line 21. Something is wrong with that line. Okay, so, but let's take note about that again. You know, it is a very important, okay, model in our DevOps training. And that's why we are trying to exhaust as much as we need to, you know. So take note about that, please. It's, 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 it's very important. Ham, as we have seen today, is a package manager. We're going to appreciate that more on Friday when we install a monitoring tool inside our Kubernetes cluster. So for now, you know, just go home knowing that or anyway you're home already but as you go, go go to sleep just understand that you know this harm is 
and you know it's it's used for us to be able to easily deploy our you know applications in a kubernetes cluster why because all the yaml files that we need to write those yaml files are going to be you know the process of writing that file is automated so we don't need to go writing so much so many files so if you include in your resume that you know the go language is not a big deal because you are going to be modifying these value files written in Go. You see that and Go language is very close to YAML. That there is no much difference. You see that? So please take note. I think that's all for today. You know, see you guys on Friday if we don't have any question. Any question? Okay. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night, Prof.